In a small village, there are four illegal immigrants with different backgrounds. A terrorist named Martinez chose to live in this village to save himself from the Israel military. In past, he and his friends blew up the Jerusalem area, but only he managed to pass. A former bank manager named Serrano who is forced to leave town after being accused of embezzling his company's money. A gangster named Domings who is forced to hide in this village because he is being hunted by a dangerous mafia. The incident began when he and his friends robbed a church to the death of a mafia brother. The last immigrant is a political elite assassin named Nilo. Different from life in the city, there they have to work hard to meet their daily needs. Like Serrano who must feel the weight of life. Just to get a piece of bread. Every day he went to work at the oil rig for very little pay. An even more sad situation was experienced by Martinez who had to lift a giant pipe. If he don't focus on doing his job, then his life can be lost. These four immigrants will not be able to spend the rest of their lives in that village. They are always looking for a way to get away. But it never works. Because there are no adequate facilities. Even the location of the airport and station is very far from the village. One day, the oil drilling site suddenly exploded. Dozens of workers died. As a result of that incident, a military general named Corlett panicked, because the fire from the explosion was not extinguished. If he didn't act soon, the villagers would be affected by the explosion. He then remembered the nitrogen that was lying dormant in the forest. He plans to use it to blow up the ground area around the oil rig, so that the ground will cover the explosion area, and the flames can be extinguished. Corlett immediately heads into the woods with an explosives expert to check the condition of the nitrogen that has been left in a damp place for a long time. Nitrogen, which was originally a powder, turns into a liquid. Liquid nitrogen is more explosive than powder nitrogen. Even if it was hit by the slightest vibration, the entire forest could be reduced to rubble. The nitrogen conditions prevented Corlett from removing all the nitrogen immediately because the forest roads were very destroyed and very impossible for workers to pass. Because of that, he then held a competition for the people in the village. Who can deliver to the six nitrogen safely, then they will be awarded a $400,000 prize. There the people then underwent a test driving a truck, including those four immigrants. Of the many participants, only Dominguez, Serrano, Martinez, and one local man were declared to have passed. But they feel that the prizes offered are lacking, so they finally asked Corlett for an additional gift in the form of a European-style housing. That request was very reasonable, considering they could die in the middle of the journey while carrying the nitrogen. After Corlett agreed, they immediately modified the provided truck so that the engine was more powerful and able to overcome all obstacles. Their Nilo felt that he had lost the only way he could return to the city because he failed the test. After they finished modifying the truck, they started transferring all the nitrogen from the warehouse to the truck that had been filled with sand, to reduce shock when passing through rocky and slippery roads. The night before departure, Corlett came to collect the drivers. They were all presented with a promissory note regarding the delivery of the nitrogen and the promised mansion. The letter made they feel relieved because they already had guarantees, although most likely they could die on the way. Before leaving, Martinez saw Nilo watching them. He then had a bad feeling, plus the local man who did not come. And that's right, the local man is dead and the culprit is none other than Nilo. This made Martinez angry, so a fight broke out between them. Hearing the fight, Dominguez and Serrano then came to separate them. It turns out that the reason Nilo killed the local man was because he also wanted to take part in delivering nitrogen to get out of the village. He was annoyed that he didn't pass the test so he killed him. Having no other choice, finally Nilo was forced to be allowed to join. These four reliable drivers are divided into two groups, Dominguez with Nilo, and Serrano with Martinez. Time was short, the Dominguez truck had started its journey earlier, through rocky paths, while they checked the state of nitrogen every time they passed the rocks, for fear of exploding. On their way, they saw an inland tribe, though the guy misunderstood when Dominguez told him they got out of the way. He assumed that Dominguez challenged him to a race, to find out who first reached the end of the road. On the other hand, Serrano's truck found a bridge made of wood that was in a fragile condition. This obstacle did not make him back down. Martinez then took over as driver, but the truck almost fell into a ravine because one of the logs was not able to hold the weight. When passing through the forest, it rained and made the road muddy and slippery. Meanwhile, Dominguez doesn't know which path to choose, because the signpost is missing. Not long after, Serrano's truck also arrived. There the two of them debate between following the directions on the map Corlette gave them, or taking another route. 
Finally they agreed to follow the direction of the map, and it turned out to be a big mistake. Dominguez's truck got stuck at the end of the rocking bridge. Nilo, seeing that the situation was getting worse, immediately wanted to run away and abandon Dominguez, but the attempt failed. Finally they were forced to use the bridge, because the previous track was muddy, it was not possible to turn around. They then started to cross the bridge. Nilo was forced to direct Dominguez's truck so that it would not be carried away by the river current. After they made it across the bridge, it was Martinez and Serrano's turn to try. What a terrible bridge it is. Different from before, now the river current is faster than when Dominguez crossed it. The situation got worse when Martinez fell while stepping on one of the fragile woods. The incident made his head almost run over by a truck, because Serrano couldn't see him. Luckily Martinez was able to get on the bridge again so Serrano could stop his truck in time. Their bad luck did not stop there. Suddenly a big branch came and made their trip lose their hope to get $400,000. On the other hand, Dominguez and Nilo, who were already far from Serrano's truck, were forced to stop because the only road on the map was blocked by a large fallen tree. There came a feeling of great annoyance, because now they are trapped in the wilderness. <laughs> Dominguez, who did not want to give up, then took a machete to cut down the tree branch. He told Nilo to stop laughing and asked him to come help him. Short of time, Martinez and Serrano finally caught up. With many wounds, it turns out they survived the bridge by using a crane. Martinez, who saw that the road was blocked by a large tree, immediately checked the tree. It turns out that with his experience as a former terrorist, he has a way to get rid of the tree. He planned to use the nitrogen they brought with him to blow up the tree. To do that, they all have to work together, make a manual explosion lighter tool, then they have to find stones to be used as ballast. The stone will be dropped on nitrogen. When preparations were complete, Martinez began calculating the distance between the explosion and the time it took them to escape. After being weighed, it turned out that the stone they chose was too heavy. Therefore Martinez immediately looked for an empty bag to hold the heavy rock. But he did not find a size large enough. When he saw Nilo, he then asked him to remove his trouser pockets. Martinez immediately tore it to put sand. Now everything is ready, they then transferred one of the nitrogens to the tree. After that, they backed the truck as far as possible to avoid the explosion. When they were in a safe position, Martinez immediately tore open the bag and immediately ran away. Thanks to Martinez's expertise, the tree was finally destroyed so they could continue their journey. They only need to travel a little more distance to get to the oil rig. But suddenly, so they say. A puff of smoke from the explosion was seen by Dominguez and Nilo. They are becoming more and more careful, because they don't want that to happen to them. Not long after, a group of bandits appeared to block them while pointing their guns at them, because he wanted the stuff that was in the truck. Dominguez could not let them have their way, but he could only surrender if the gun was pointed at him. At that point, Nilo pretended to cough so he wouldn't be let out of the truck. When the bandits unloaded the truck, they were shocked to see the nitrogen inside. Nilo used that opportunity to shoot the bandits, but the bandits shot him. Dominguez then immediately helped him to get into the truck, but so poor, Nilo could not survive. He died. Long story short, Dominguez continued his journey carrying nitrogen by walking, because the truck has run out of gas, with difficulty he walked for dozens of kilometers, until finally he arrived at the oil drilling site. The nitrogen that he brought was immediately given to the soldiers who were stationed there. Finally the flames were extinguished and Corlette kept his promise to Dominguez. He was presented with a passport gift for his departure to Paris. Because he was the only survivor, all of his friend's money was given to him. But when the last seconds of his departure, he changed his mind. He who was too comfortable with local wisdom, then decided to stay in the village with his beloved. But at the same time, two assassins hired by the Mafia, came to the village to kill him. And the movie ends.